Volunteering is a powerful force that transcends boundaries, bringing people from all walks of life together for a common purpose. Whether it's fighting poverty, protecting the environment, or supporting vulnerable populations, volunteers selflessly dedicate their time, skills, and energy to uplift those in need. If you've been listening to our podcast, it should be no surprise that The Triangle is full of businesses and organizations that are committed to doing good. Um, and if you've been listening to our podcast for a really long time, you might remember our conversation with Activate Good about their local nonprofit and how they help recruit and connect individuals, groups, and companies with these awesome volunteer opportunities. So in this episode, we're having Activate Good back on the show to check in and hear about some of their exciting new projects and developments. Welcome to the Good Guide to Business, a podcast presented by Better Business Bureau. The Good Guide is all about conversations with businesses, organizations, and local leaders who are going above and beyond to make our community a better place. So grab a cup of coffee, sit down, and get ready to hear from this episode's special guest, Jen Von Egedy of Activate Good. Jen, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here with you both. Yeah, it's exciting to have you in our studio. Um, so for those of you who maybe aren't super caught up on Activate Good and what we've been doing with them, Activate Good is an awesome partner that BBB has, and they do so many great things. Um, Jen does a lot of their media and a lot of their public relations stuff. She's amazing. We've gotten to work with her before. So it's, it's great just to have you on the show and to talk more about Activate Good. Yeah, excited to be here. Um, so again, maybe for our listeners that aren't really caught up, maybe that episode, I mean, it was two years ago that we first talked sure. to Activate Good, um, maybe they haven't listened or seen that one yet. Um, can you talk a little bit about the core value and the mission of Activate Good? Yeah, sure. So Activate Good um, is really, um, we envision a world in which everyone knows how they want to give back and not just how they want to give back and where their place might be, but they actually are following through on that action and doing so. And so um, we really believe that through empowering people to get connected with what they're passionate about and to get connected with what the true community needs are, it's really going to help foster that like um, giving back and, and, and having action for the rest of their lives, we're hoping. And so we really do that through things like education opportunities, um, action opportunities, which could be volunteering or coming to a learn and serve project. Um, and then also just through um, mobilization and just like giving people tools to get out in front of others and build community and um, use their voice, right, to talk about these things and uplift what's important to them. Yeah, so we do that through a lot of different ways. We have um, our volunteer database, which I think a lot of people think of first when they think of Activate Good. We partner with over 600 nonprofits across the triangle. So we serve the greater triangle area, five counties. And um, those organizations we partner with are able to post for free their volunteer opportunities. And so that's one of the easiest ways to plug in and find out what the needs are in our community. Um, and it's pretty quick. Um, but we also offer other things like um, we do big days of service projects like the 9-11 day or week of service, depending on the year and how we build that out. And so that's a really great way to just like plug in with a lot of other people on one giant impactful day and be part of like a transformational experience as well. Um, and then we also do things like our um, employee volunteerism program where we work with corporations to help them figure out like where they want employees to plug in and how to give back. Um, and so we have a, a lot of uh, variety in how we can help um, an organization or a company do that um, as well. And so Activate Good is really, you know, we're out in the world trying to, to spread the mission of just like civic empowerment and giving back in your community. And so you'll see us out speaking 
thinking about those things as well. And that's really like the big array of services that we have. And there's a lot of things that fall under those umbrellas. Yeah, that's all absolutely huge. So that stat you brought up that you guys have connection to the 600 nonprofits in the Triangle, um, that absolutely blows my mind, you know? Yeah. The, the fact that you guys have all those connections. I didn't even think there were 600 nonprofits in the triangle. And, you know, this is something that we like to talk about on the show all the time, all these amazing organizations. You guys are very much at the center of it all, which is absolutely amazing. Yeah, we really see our job as like trying to keep our fingers on the pulse of what's happening and what those needs are out in the community. And so it could be um, nonprofits, but sometimes we work with governmental organizations or grassroots organizations that um, are really just trying to help. And so we really love to hear like what's happening, what's going on in those communities. And to be a leader in, in an area, you know, that might be mean that it's someone who's a leader in a nonprofit organization, but it could be just the guy that lives on the street that we're going to go pick up litter on and can really tell you the historical aspects of that community and what that means, you know, for them. And so we really believe that um, <clears throat> that by partnering with these organizations and, and listening, that we're able to better fit. We're not just making... Um, pretty shiny volunteer projects for the sake of doing it because we don't believe in transactional volunteerism. But we really wanted to be more transformational where when you come, you really get to learn more about why it's important, what the history is there, and how you can keep making impact even after that experience. And so that's the big thing for us is, is it's an experience. It's not just like a checkbox that needs to be checked off. Yeah, so can you talk a little bit more about that? Like, how do you foster the relationship between the volunteers and the community or whatever they're helping? Yeah. To so this spring, we formalized the process and kicked off our um, learn and serve model where we've taken some of our community partners that we've really worked with um, over and over again. And we've built that trust and rapport um, just by being, you know, re repeat partners and at different levels too, right? Like we help them fill ongoing volunteer needs and we come and do transformational projects and when they have something that's happening we'll share it on social media and so we have all these ways we're building trust with these organizations and then when we realize that what the learn and serve model needed was community partners that we could rely on and kind of pilot this program first, we knew who to call first. And so we've been partnering with some of our nonprofit partners to um, take a moment before a project and really explain the impact of that project. And what's, what's been interesting is that sometimes the, the organization you would think, um, for example, Passage Home, you would think maybe we're going to be working um, directly with something along the lines of like, homelessness but we've actually been working with them on their community garden um and talking about food insecurity in that area and so um the whole focus is about food insecurity and it really just shows like how all of these social issues um, overlay and so you can't really talk about homelessness or poverty without talking about food deserts and food and access to healthy foods. And so it's been a really beautiful way for Passage Home to really teach Activate Good more about like what else are they looking at and what are they hearing from their clients. And so um, that building of trust and for them to come to us with a, d a different kind of project than maybe what those volunteers were expecting um, and a social issue that maybe they wouldn't have exactly thought of as Passage Homes. Um, They've really been able to, um, to to lean on us and us on them to make these projects a success. And so what's nice is that people that are coming to these projects, they might come back to Activate Good. They might end up being like an ongoing volunteer with Passage Home. But if our mission truly is, you know, we want people to in, to be empowered to, to know how to do good, but also continue to do good afterwards then that's, you know, those are our top KPIs that we're trying to meet right there. And so um, I think that being there and listening to your community partners and being able to pivot um, what we might be thinking we want as a volunteer project and what they actually need or what the people they're serving actually needs. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's an interesting way to think about it because I feel like a lot of people, probably myself included in the past, when they think about volunteering, they're like, well, what do I want to do? Like, what sounds fun or cool to me and not like, what does my community need first? 
Yeah. I think that's really important and Mm -hmm. cool that that's your focus. Right. And then again, just going off of that mindset, I feel like a lot of that would turn into like this transactional volunteering where you just, you know, show up. Maybe your company said you can have a day off if you show up and volunteer. But you guys really take that to another level where, you know, people will really learn the importance and the impact they're making. And I assume you guys see a lot of repeat projects and people coming back, continuing to work with you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we're, we're really excited to see a lot of people that are coming back. Um, we weren't sure what that was going to look like after um, the pandemic. Um, people are moving new and moving out of the triangle all the time, right? And so um, we were able to actually reach back out to old meetup groups that we had, which isn't really a thing we do anymore. But what's lovely is that we have all these people Um, right there that we were kind of able to say hey like it's a reunion come back help us kick off this cool new project and we had like a really high rate of people that showed up from years ago because they wanted to see what this new impactful thing was but we also like have so many new um, visitors to our website every day too that it shows that we're able to retain our current volunteer force but also we're we're attracting a lot of new people that are interested in something different right Yeah. yeah Um, So I assume a lot of our listeners and our viewers are people that work for companies in the triangle. Um, how does Activate Good partner with these companies? Yeah, so we do we do a variety of things, actually. And I think really um, what some of our companies might know us for is just helping with their employee volunteerism programs, um, which is something we love to do. Um, and that can look like doing transformational projects that can look like us bringing a portable project to your organization and partnering with you um, to do like a packing ki- a packing of some sort of kit or something like that. Um, or plugging you into days of service um, that we already have happening. So we already know we have these projects, like where can your company plug in and be part of that? Of course, sponsorship is always a great way that we partner with companies as well um, to help uh, get the word out about um, uh, your brand and what you're doing and vice versa so we can get ours out as well. But I think what's really cool is that through our Triangle Businesses for Good um, membership um, organization that we have, we are pushing out the Civic 50 of the Greater Triangle right now. And so that is a new initiative that we have taken from nationally, the Points of Light, which is a affiliate, uh, we're affiliate of, does the Civic 50 at a national level. What we're doing is bringing it regionally to the greater triangle. We're the um, fifth in the nation to do this at a regional level. And so Points of Light has really been there to help us talk through what it is. And so let me tell you what it is. (laughs) So the Civic 50, Um, of the Greater Triangle is a way for us to recognize the top 50 companies in the Greater Triangle that are really dedicated to just being a uh, community-minded business and making an impact in the community. And so how we figure out who that top 50 is is through an assessment survey that just opened up and is live now until about mid-August. The Civic 50 survey is a tool where you can benchmark where you fall against other um, organizations across the triangle for your corporate social responsibility. And it really is a tool that you can bring to your management and say, we're doing great in this part of our corporate social responsibility, but here's some places where we can grow. And so it's really meant to be a tool that is like helpful to your organization to figure out how do we strategically plan to be more um, community minded and where do we go from here what are some like low hanging fruits that we can do um, now and then in five years maybe we'll get to this point um, but it's also a way for us to recognize those businesses that are already doing that good work and so the people that fall in the top 50 won't be ranked um, so if you're you're either in the 50 or you're not but we don't advertise if you applied and didn't get into the top 50 Um, either. So there's no shame in this game, right? Like we want everyone to be excited about the survey and we want to congratulate those and recognize the people that are are the organizations that are already in that 50. But we also really want to support organizations on using this as a way that they can improve as well. 
Um, and so we like to think that like bringing these Triangle Businesses for Good members together and with people that are just interested in the survey that we can start having open dialogue about corporate social, social responsibility and starting to hear what other organizations are doing that's new and innovative. Yeah, and so after you guys complete this survey, it's going to be public, right, for consumers to see the 50 and to be able to find those businesses? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so that's a huge incentive as well. You know, if you're doing this great work, we want to know about it and we want um, your consumers to know about it as well. Yeah, gosh, I mean, I, we're all consumers technically. So, yeah. I mean, as someone who buys things and works with businesses, I'd certainly want to see what sorts of businesses have taken the time to fill out that survey and then have mm -hmm. been awarded with that to show that they actually are making an impact. Yeah, exactly. And you know, Nick, we're finding that people, you know, maybe I don't have time to volunteer right now. And maybe, um, you know, a donation doesn't really seem like something I can do. But what I can do is use my purchase power, right? And so we're finding that people are learning new ways to give back civically. Um, and by putting out that top 50 list, like that, those are people that we can recommend. Like here, here's people or organizations or leaders that are, are interest in corporate social responsibility and they made the civic 50 and so that's something that we can proudly say you know that that we're supporting and I hope that the organizations that make that top 50 will you know be excited to share it too yeah can you talk a little bit about like who should participate in this survey? Yeah. Like, size of businesses, that kind of thing. I would love to. So we're trying to hit all sizes of businesses and, and you're really compared to other, or, um, other companies or organizations your size. So it has to be five employees or, mo or more to be counted. We're really looking for those mom and pop organizations that have five or more employees and your your scores will be right against other organizations with a similar size workforce. Um, and so we're hopeful that, you know, giant corporations that might be participating in the national points of light Civic 50 survey will do it at a regional level. So it will be about their greater triangle impact specifically. Um, and so we really want to see all levels of business represented there. And then as far as who would fill out the survey, I've, we've gotten that question a lot. Um, it depends, right? Not every organization has a CSR expert that's working there. And some might not even know what CSR stands for, corporate social responsibility, right? Um, and so we're finding maybe a human resources person, maybe the CEO, um, that would be that designated person to really take the survey. And you might have to talk to other departments to get all the information you need um, to, to complete the survey as well. And so that's, you know, this is our first year doing it um, alongside these companies to support them. Um, and we're really hopeful that we can work together and answer some questions about what to expect. Right. Yeah, and I mean, CSR is huge. It's, you know, a lot of what you guys do, a lot of what we do, especially with this show as well. Um, so maybe a business or somebody who's listening to this, maybe they're not super familiar with that. Um, would you be able to break that down and talk about some of the things that are included under CSR? Yeah, definitely. So the survey itself is really looking at kind of um, how have you invested in corporate social responsibility? How have you institutionalized it? So like, what does that look like? What does CSR look like within your company, right? And so one of the things like at Activate Good, for example, we really look at like our internal workforce too, because the health of our staff internally is really gonna help us be better people when we go out in the world and interact with people. Um, we're giving our healthiest selves first. And so there are questions like, do you have, you know, what kind of policies and procedures do you have in place in your workforce? And things like the volunteering hours. So for some organizations and listeners right now, you might be like, wait, some people get paid time off to volunteer? <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Because in some places, that's really a relatively new concept, right? And those are what I'm, what I'm thinking about is some of the low-hanging fruit things that you might be able to accomplish. Um, but also, like, um, are you, uh, what's your impact environment? mentally where are you where are you purchasing your items from do you have different vendors um, or do you always go to the same vendor for things all the time um, are you looking at um, your donations your sponsorships like how how is the business keeping back um, and so there's a there's a variety of different ways that corporate so social responsibility is looked at and so 
that's why I think taking the assessment is a really good idea because you might be doing you might be a rock star at some things and then there's things you haven't even thought about yet that you could be improving um, easily Um, and that really just makes for a better workforce internally but also that community impact externally yeah and it sounds like a lot of those things too you know companies may be doing that already and they just don't know and then filling out that survey maybe it'll tell them right yeah yeah definitely yeah and we've gotten questions like you know, I don't feel like I'm ready to take it this year, maybe next year. And I totally get that, like coming from the nonprofit world, it feels like it's always hard to slow down and kind of take that time. Or you want to be like at a certain place before you um, you take it. And I find that, you know, life and work is always going to happen, right? Like you're always going to have someone that's resigned and you're figuring that out you're gonna have a board that you're trying to stabilize like life is always gonna happen and I say like just go ahead and take it now like start that benchmarking and by next year you'll already get to see growth you know like the if it's something you're trying for then that's great because you can say that when you go back you know to your CEO and and show them like where you are but guess what we're already planning this Um, And so by next year, we'll already be able to show improvement. And I think that that's, um, you know, something that maybe people are hesitant to do. Um, But we're really hopeful that people will jump on this first year and just take the survey, just see where you are, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think you mentioned that they don't have to fill out everything too, right? So Mm -hmm. that's probably important for people to realize. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I mean, try to do the best you can, right? I mean, and sometimes there might be bureaucracy that it's like, I can't get this information this time, but that's okay. Like we're, this is something that we can work towards, right? It's all about like progress and not perfection. Cool. Yeah. And it's something you can save and come back to, right? You don't have to do yes, it all in one. Yes, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Because cool. I could see some people being like, that sounds like it's going to take forever. <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So it might be something you want to take a look at now. Um, and also, um, I, I might mention now that we have a LinkedIn live stream that's coming up where people can just ask questions about the Civic 50. That's going to be on June 6th at noon. So that's something that we'll be sharing out on our platforms. We hope that people come to and um, ask us some questions about what to expect. Or maybe you've already opened the survey and we can like dive deep into that. So um, we're, we're hopeful that people will um, start this process like soon um, so that we can really like partner on getting this survey in. Okay. Yeah. And then it, other than the live stream, how can people, where should they go to ask questions? Yeah. Um, so activategood.org backslash Civic 50 has a lot of information about the Civic 50. There's also an interest form on there. So you can um, fill that out. And um, our fund development manager, Lee, um, will be in touch with you. Um, and so staff is here to talk with you. We also just have like ongoing informational sessions that will be coming out. So um, this li- LinkedIn live stream coming up in June is the next one, but we are already planning some stuff for July as well. All I right. have two more questions about the Civic 50 real quick then. Sure, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> so one question is, what is the timeline gonna look like for people getting information back once they submit and the deadline passes? Yeah, that's a great question. I think it takes a couple of weeks before um, you get more information, like a fuller report, but you should get a scorecard almost immediately in your email. Um, and so there's an opportunity to get the the scorecard expansion, and I believe that there's a $200 fee if you wanted to get like a, a fuller report for, for that. So that's an optional thing that each organization can decide. Um, And then as far as who gets awarded the Civic 50, I think that that's going to take a little bit longer. It's our first year, so it's like I don't want to like say it's going to be four weeks and then it's really six because I hate to um, over promise and under deliver. But um, everyone who is in that Civic 50 will know well before the awards show that will be in October um, whether or not they won and um, or made the Civic 50 and will be recognized for that. yeah, does that answer your question? Yes. And then my other question was like how or I guess who who is doing the judging of everybody's surveys? 
Yeah, so we actually use the same company that um, True Impact that does the Civic 50 scorecard for the National Civic 50 as well. Um, and so it's all like a run through a computer and then they like back check everything for us and, and spit that data out. So um, that is something that they've been doing for a long time with Points of Light. Um, and we're excited that we're able to use that resource as well. Yeah, so we don't activate good. It's just, um, you know, we're hosting and bringing this to the triangle, um, but we don't have to do the scorecard part, which is really nice. Yeah, yeah I bet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't want to make you spill all the beans just yet, mm -hmm. but can you talk more about that award ceremony that's going to be associated with this? Sure, yeah. We just announced our save the date is October 25th for a awards breakfast. So this will be that morning um, at Marriott City Center Raleigh. So we're really excited to be able to be right here in the center of Raleigh with that. Um, and it will be a ticketed event. So we're hopeful that um, everyone who takes the Civic 50 survey will want to come to the award show um, and, and kind of help us recognize those that made it, right? And so um, we're really excited to to be able to recognize those across the triangle that have really dedicated so much to being a, a community-minded business, um, both internally and externally. And so we're just gonna be able to take that moment to give them their awards um, and uh, uh, do a press release as well about who is in that list. And so we're hopeful that businesses across the triangle are gonna wanna come and help recognize that as well. Yeah, that sounds like an all-around great event. And, mm -hmm. you know, speaking as someone who's been to Activate Good events before, they're just awesome opportunities to meet like-minded like organizations and individuals um, and just share your mission, learn yeah. about different missions. Um, yeah, they're all great. Wonderful. Yeah, we like to have a lot of fun at our events. So, um, you know, I feel like our work is really important in what we do, but we also take that time out to celebrate and have fun, and that's what this breakfast is all about. Is there any other exciting Activate Good news on the horizon that you can share with us right now? Yeah, sure. Um, so Activate Good just um, changed our Teens Change the World program over to Youth Volunteer Course, and that is off and running. We have a summer series that's going to be happening. So anyone that might have a teen um, that's um, 11 and older that wants to participate in Youth Volunteer Corps, this is a great time for them to get involved in their community, to really empower themselves, to become a leader in the community. And so to keep your eyes out. I'm going to be dropping some information about a summer series soon. It's open to the public, so you don't have to be a member of the Youth Volunteer Corps, but uh, your teen can go ahead and join a project, learn more about it, and then sign up. Be a part of the Youth Volunteer Corps. It's a really cool thing. Yeah, cool. And then for listeners that we have that may not be in the Triangle area, like within y'all's normal reach, are there any like similar organizations that you guys know about that people could be involved in or how can they work with you guys if they can? Yeah, definitely. So Points of Light is who we affiliate with. So there's other organizations that do similar work to ours, um, but they pretty much almost all have like that volunteering component. Um, and there are some other um, Points of Light affiliates across North Carolina and across the nation. And so you can check out that map at pointsoflight.org um, or you can go to Activate Good and um, go to like our About page and, and we point to some others as well. But if you hit us up, um, you know, email or social media, we'll help point you that way too. And then do you want to share your email and social media? <laughs> I would people? love to do that. <laughs> yes. Okay. So we're Activate Good and we're at activategood.org. You can reach Jen at marketing at activategood.org or just get general info at info at activategood.org. Cool. Awesome stuff. Well, Jen, thank you so much for joining us on the show. It was yeah. really a pleasure speaking to you as always. Thanks for having us. Yeah. I think that... Um, yeah, I'm just hopeful that this might inspire a few people to reach out. Check out our website. We have a new website that's rolling out soon this summer. Oh, yeah, that's so that's exciting too. Um, but um, so you might see a change if you check it out today between now and July. But um, check out what's happening. There's always something that you can do in the triangle. So um, I really challenge everyone to take a look. Yeah, awesome. 
Well, to all of our listeners, thank you for tuning into this episode of The Good Guide to Business. Yeah, and be sure to follow us at BBB Carolinas. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and of course, go listen to The Good Guide on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and pretty much wherever else you can listen to podcasts. We release these episodes twice every month on Wednesdays. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time. See you guys.